Hey y'all, um, I'm Kelly from Under Texas Sky. I'm trying to go live here on YouTube. I hope that this is going to work out right. Um, I'm not exactly sure how um, going live on your end works, but hopefully y'all have done it several times and you're going to be good to go. What I want to share with you today is making a um, vinyl sign, or excuse me, making a painted sign using your vinyl cutter as, what is two mean, honey? Nine people. Okay. Um, it's working, you okay, got the 13. Um, I, but what I want to show you is how to use One your like. vinyl cutter, please, um, <laughs> to cut out stencils so you can make a painted sign. Now, I always use- Hi my, from Wisconsin. Hi from Wisconsin. Land of the Badgers. <laughs> Okay, now we're not going to be able to do that with everybody that gets on. Oh, yeah. Mean Man. Mean Man's real excited <laughs> about people joining, even though we can't figure out how to watch it on our, on our own screen. So, you know, we, we don't know what's going on here, but we're, but we're still having a good time. Um, normally now, when I had made signs in the past, I just paint my board. I do whatever I'm going to do um, as far as distressing it or whatever, and I slapped my vinyl on it, and it looked great. Um, and, and Hello, Jill from Wisconsin. This... Um, is one in Ohio. Of the signs. Can you see this? The sign. This is vinyl. I, I painted no, the, this. The light, the light is getting a bad look. Oh, like. No, you're good. I painted this sign I, with uh, some. Actually, a hello, spade. California. You, you, you really are not going to be able to do that, <laughs> man. You're going to have to stop for sure. Um, shooting your wheels off. <laughs> yes, you really are. Um, anyway, when I did this sign, which I do have a video that shows you how to make this exact kind of sign. I stained this little thin board with some dark stain. I let it dry. I threw a little coat of poly on it to give it a little bit of slickness because then I went over it with chalk paint and I wanted that paint to release and I was able to sand the edges and everything and uh, distress it, which I love. I think it looks, I just love the way this looks. Then I did a vinyl cutout and um, I just stuck it on there. And this is the vinyl, which I think looks fine. After I put my vinyl on, I usually will go over that with, um, I use this. Roll Tide. Urethane um, poly. And this does not turn yellow. Um, a lot of your polyurethanes will turn yellow, but this one's a water-based. And I go over my letters with that. It holds the vinyl down. And uh, I've got signs that are outside that I made Christmases years, three years ago. The vinyl letters are still fine and it's out in the weather every day. Now this sign, I did exactly the same way. I, I did the same technique on, on um, distressing it and everything, but I used my vinyl as a stencil. Instead of putting the vinyl letters on, I put a big swath of vinyl and it was everything but the letters, um, you know, but the, I don't know how to explain it. You're going to do the opposite of what you do normally when you're putting the actual vinyl letters on your project. I'm just, I'm going to show you that. I've got the I need two examples here. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Um, I, I like, for my personal preference, I like doing this. This is where I painted my background and everything. I put the big block of vinyl on here with the opposite of the relief um, pulled out of it, and then um, I painted the letters, okay? So I decided what color the letters were by painting them on there. Um, there is a way to do it. I'm gonna show you two techniques for making a painted sign. And sometimes, you know what, especially if you're selling these, people prefer your signs to be painted. I, I don't really know why, but I think they feel like it's, more personal or something, but I'm gonna give you two examples of how to do that. Um, the first one is how I did the gather sign. I went ahead and I cut my vinyl, and then when I weeded out my vinyl, what I did was I weeded the letters and I left the filler. Normally when you weed, you're gonna be, I would be pulling that whole vinyl off, the letters would be left and I would be weeding out the inside of the O, the inside of the um, ampersand, or, yeah, and, and so forth, all the way through. But with this, you do just the opposite. You weed everything that you want, you know, your letters to be, you, you just leave the block of vinyl and you weed the actual letters out. Now, normally, what you would do, there's this very same saying is on here, 
and I'm going to just use the same thing as an example. I've already cut this out, and normally, and of course it's white on white, it's hard to see, but I'm going to go ahead and pull my vinyl, and this if I and and this is another method for stenciling, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm actually creating a stencil. Only I'm creating it with the letters. Come on, I'll let go. This gets real intricate right here. It probably wasn't the best example to use, but we're gonna we're gonna pull this out, and y'all are gonna see how we're going here. I downloaded this. Um, oh, it's pooey. Um, I'm still gonna go ahead and do this, even though a lot of this is it's weeding out some little fancy things. But that's not what this this uh, tutorial is about. Oh, let's see, one of my letters didn't even come out. Boy, I tell ya. There it goes. And there's the D. And the inside of the D comes out. Come on out. And this curly Q doesn't want to let go. There we go. Okay. Well, the E didn't come out. Boy, I tell you what, y'all are getting to see all of the things that you can encounter. Is that a fresh cutter? In the you know, machine? it's not. A, I did not. It's not a fresh blade, and I have done a lot of cutting. Um, that's something I always, you know, I don't, didn't take my own advice, and you want to be sure you've got a fresh blade. Plus, I have these are kind of delicate letters. Um, they're skinny letters, and. Um, so it's easy for them to pull up with the vinyl. And I'm sorry, it's taken me a little bit of time. You know, and, and my the S just came off, which I don't even care because I'm not even gonna be able to get the whole thing on here. Um, somebody asked me um, about editing my videos and why I show y'all the way things happen as they happen. I think it's important for y'all to know that even if you do some, even people who do things a lot, can run into problems, and I want y'all to be aware that everything doesn't always go smoothly. Um, I do need one tool. Me and I'm gonna grab this tool over here. Well, you have hellos from Connecticut, Idaho, Alabama, California, Ohio, Wisconsin. That's and, fabulous. And other areas too, but a lot of them are duplicates, but yes, so. Awesome, awesome. Okay, now normally, now I'm gonna do just like I would, if I were gonna put the vinyl on here to stay, I'm gonna go ahead and weed out all of the insides of these letters. And do you prefer a particular tool to do that with? I like this spatula. Um, I use a Silhouette um, Cameo cutter. And this, the tools that come with the Silhouette are this little spatula, I call it a paddle, because I can kind of stick that to it. It also, they have this hook that um, also works okay, but I really like using this spatula. We got roll rocky top and rocky mountain checking in too. All right. So you're saying the Vols? We got volunteers? Yes. You said rocky top? Yep. Well, my daughter graduated the, from law buffaloes school. Buffaloes and the volunteers? Yeah, my, dad, my daughter graduated from law school from the University of Alabama, so we were all tied around here. Yeah. For sure. We, 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 love, we love all of y'all, but hey, you know, and, come on. But then again, my youngest daughter graduated from TCU, and that's, I don't know if y'all know TCU, but it's the Horn Frogs, and we also, we like to go frogs around here, too. Arizona's checking in, and you have one comment that says your videos are real oops and all. That, that's exactly <laughs> what I want to be. I just, you know, you always see people and everything works out perfect for them on their videos, and that's bull. You're, things don't go perfect. I mean, I don't care how many times you do them. And a lot of times I'll show y'all stuff, and it's the first time I've ever tried it, and somebody made a comment about that the other day that just what they like to hear, someone who says, I've never done this before, but I'm going to do a tutorial. Well, you know, y'all get to see how it happens as it happens. So, uh, okay. So, anyway, now, on this technique, doing it a stencil this way, Paint your board whatever color you want your letters to be. So in this case, my letters are gonna be black. I painted this whole board black. Um, that's what letters, I mean, that's what color your letters are going to be. So you paint your whole board, your entire board, or everywhere you're gonna have letters, paint it that color. 
Now I'm going to lay this vinyl down. Now this is always the tricky, sticky part of doing vinyl, is getting your letters off of your vinyl and onto your surface. It's just always a crapshoot. It's my least favorite part of this. And I, this uh, transfer tape that I'm using, I've used it a bajillion times. I mean, all, it, almost all the sticky's gone. But a lot of times I do that, I, as soon as I do transfer paper for the first time, I'll peel off whatever size I'm gonna use and then I will stick it like on my craft table. And then I'll peel it off because I wanna get some of that sticky off of there or it won't let go of your vinyl when you're trying to put it on. Is that gonna be a problem with the H? Um, I'm not worried. You know, this this is just a sample. I'm not okay. even worried. I'm not getting the whole thing on here. You're just showing the technique. I just want you to see the technique. And look at there. Of course, it didn't stick. Dead gummy. I might have to get a new sheet of vinyl. Um, uh, excuse me, transfer tape. Our Cajun, cu Cajun cousins from Louisiana are checking in. And, and Memphis, you need to send me some uh, pulled pork. I see you. I okay, see you know what? Oh, it didn't, it, didn't, pull it, it, didn't, all, did it, it didn't pull it at all. And it's because I've used it several times. Let me try this okay. sheet and see if I can get this to work. See, that's the thing that's so scary about going live too, is that mm -hmm. um, I can't edit any of this out. Y'all are getting it all. Y'all are getting it all, warts and all. And, okay, and I probably could rub on that. I don't have my little um, rubby tool. And I just picked up whatever I had. This is a, a paintbrush. Usually you, use, you could use a credit card. Um, Silhouette comes with a little nifty flat tool that allows you to um, rub, you know, more thoroughly. Your... Where do you have it over there? I don't know. I don't know. My, my... I went back to work, y'all, and uh, my life has been straight upside down since then. I just feel like I don't know if I'm coming or going. Um, I just don't have the same time that I used to have to spend on things. Okay. All right. A good bit of my letters are coming off now. So let's see. Come on, you sticky thing. Let go. Let's see. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's a miracle. Christ <gasps> Christmas miracle. Oh, almost. <laughs> okay. So now, boy, oh, this is just a mess, good gravy. What in the world happened to my Y? Oh, that's a U, never mind. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna stick this on my sign. Do you, uh, question, do you yes. need a Cricut machine to do this? You, you, a Cricut or so, you have to have a die cutter to do this, um, unless, you know, let me show them what you have over here. They, I'm sure that, yeah, you can show them. Unless you can find um, letters, you know, like scrapbook letters that you can peel off. Um, hey, Mark. Yeah, I'm losing stuff. Yeah, your things are going a little haywire. Um, anyway, you, you really do need a, a cutter or if you can find stickers that, um, have what you would like and then you know you'd have to do them you know one letter at a time um yes i'm using a metal ruler don't judge me um, i don't know where my tool is to actually do this wow uh, yeah <laughs> don't judge me okay and this is just cattywampus okay oh my god look how it's coming off um and so and you, you just peel your backing back off and your letters have stuck. Do you want to tell them the different types of vinyl you use? I, now, I this vinyl that I'm using is um, Oracle, I believe it's 631. Um, that is removable vinyl. The vinyl that I put in my signs, if I'm going to have a permanent, you know, if I'm going to leave the vinyl on there and not use it as a stencil, I use the 651, Oracle 651. Um, and I'll try to link to um, my Amazon page where you'll be able to see, um, you can purchase them from Amazon. That's usually where I get mine. Um, I'm always le a little leery of Amazon, but, but that's where I get mine. Okay, now, 
you want to be sure that your letters are stuck down really, really well because you don't want the paint to bleed. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about in just a second because I am going to use this as the actual stencil. So I'm, I'm feeling like my letters are on here pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take my chalk paint. And of course, I don't have the, um, oh, I don't have to have it over. I, I ordered this from Amazon and it came, this can came all wonky with the lid barely on it, paint spilling out. They sent me another can, but I'm still using this because it, because it was free basically. So um, they didn't want me to send it back. So, okay, your next step. Now we're gonna pretend, I'm gonna put both examples on here. So we're gonna pretend like, you know, our sign is gonna end right here. Um, and this portion will be our sign. What you're gonna do is whatever color you want the main part of your board to be, that's the color you paint now. Remember, the first layer, the first coat of paint is the color you want your letters to be. Now, you want which, the color, yeah, yeah these letters are black. Yeah. And so then essentially what I would have done is painted white over the whole thing, which is I'm, I'm about to do. And I'm just taking a foam so this, brush. This is, this is the finished product of what you, yes. I used a different style on that. Though. Right. I did not use this style. I don't like this style as much. And you can use a roller, you know, a roller brush to do this. Hello, South Carolina. If you'd like. Hi, South Carolina. Our, my youngest daughter and her husband lived in Charleston for a while. He's a pilot in the Air Force, flying this mighty C-17 out of Charleston. And, uh, and then you just paint over this. If you want to, you know, you're going to want to be more careful than I'm being because you're. this is going to be basically your finished product product this is your top coat and you want it you're gonna want it to look good and like I said um, I've made signs like this before and I used a roller a foam roller just to roll right over so okay so basically this is your sign now let me grab a drink Now, how you're gonna get back to your letters. I would let this dry, but in the interest of time, I mean, it's chalk paint, it'll dry really fast. And you'll do a much better job, you know, of painting. And if you wanna make it dry faster, you could put a fan on it or a heat gun. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I don't even have my, well, my ceiling fan is on a little bit. Um, but now what you're gonna do is you're going to peel these letters off. That's why you want to use a removable vinyl. Don't use permanent vinyl, even though permanent vinyl actually can be removed. It doesn't really set in until this, a little this while is permanent later. Vinyl yeah, this on is here. permanent vinyl. Plus, that's been polyed over yeah. also. And this is painted. But what you're want, going to want to do, and this is the, the, one of the main reasons I don't love this, because you can there's just too much room for error. You're going to peel up. If the paint was completely dry, it'd make it a lot easier. Yeah, I wouldn't be so nervous about it. So I say. You have tweezers to pull it? No, I, I can, once it starts coming up, you can just grab it. And I've seen a lot of people use this technique and it works beautifully. And I've even used this technique and it did just fine. But see, if the, if it, the paint were dry, I wouldn't care so much about scraping any of it off. You see, I scraped it right there, but that's because it's wet. So let your yeah. paint, let your paint be we'll dry. Just pretend it was dry. There. And you're gonna just peel those letters away. And see, I'm just making a horrible mess of this. But it, it does show the technique and, and yes. how it happen. And let you know why I don't, this is not my preference. This is really not. Um, but you still, you, but once, you, once it dries, I mean, you, it's you've got crisp. really nice, yeah. crisp, sharp lines. They're not bleeding through. Yeah, it's and, just, it's just starting your letters. That's the have you been thing. able? Have you been able to find the fleur de lis? Fleur de lis, I have not. You know, if I again, if I wanted fleur de lis, I would go on um, my silhouette, go to the silhouette store, and I would just download um, the fleur de lis. I'm sure they've got fleur de lis on this in the silhouette store. 
That's what I love about the silhouette. You know, they're, they've got countless um, numbers of images that you can um, download. And plus, I mean, you know, I, there's some of my lettering. Babe, you're, okay, I'm glad you're close with the camera, but you're you're hitting my hand. Um, Get ready a lot, for your close-up. A lot of my signs, I just do the lettering myself. I just, you know, I have a lot of different fonts, and I just do the lettering myself. Um, and you can do some some curvy, you, you know. You see how well that comes out. Like I said, if everything was dried, there would be no marks on there at all. Yeah. It would just be nice, crisp lines. And you have to be patient. You know, I'm rushing through this, clearly, because I'm wanting to show y'all. Um, if you're just patient with it, you can, it, it really, it's really cool. It's not, it's not hard. It's really not hard. Boy, I made a real mess there because my, my well, thumbprint. Well, that's um, Okay. When you're lucky, it does like that and the whole thing comes off, which is awesome. And plus, this is a real, like I said too, this is a real skinny font for the most part. Let's see how much of this I can get out at once. To get the bulk of it. Oh, look at how beautiful. Ah, I got a lot of it. And you know, one thing I do like about this technique also is it doesn't, it really honestly doesn't look stenciling. Um, it, it does look like you're a wonderful calligrapher and you made these wonderful letters and people will ask you if you did it by hand. And peeled off the stencil by hand. Technically, <laughs> you did because it's, it's my hand that's peeling the stencil off. Uh, but yeah, people people will wonder and they'll think that you wow, you're really really talented. You did that by hand. Now see, I've got paint on my hook, and so I'm getting it all over this black, trying to get this. There's another little curly cue right here. to get it off. Yeah, it's okay. Um. Anyway, I think y'all get the gist, even though yeah. it looks terrible. Yeah. Um. But you can see, basically, this is, it looks like a painted sign. It looks yeah, like we know used... the U's messed up, but this oh, yeah. was just an idea of just it's... showing the technique more than right, getting it everything Right, right. I just, yeah, I barely got that off of the, um, yeah. off the, the vinyl backing. But you can see in the areas where. Yeah. I mean, it, tur it I think it turns out yeah. fine. It just, Once to it me, completely it's, dries. it's just a bit of a hassle peeling all those letters um, like that. I'm not, I mean, and of course my hands are awful now. So now what I'm going to show you is if I'm going to use this entire thing as a stencil, like a traditional stencil that you would tape to your project and then paint over. That's what I'm going to do now. And for me, using a regular stencil, I am the worst at using the, a regular stencil. I cannot, I, I know that's hard to believe. I, I cannot make it work. I cannot do it without it bleeding through. Um, but that's the great thing about using this vinyl. It, it all sticks um, to your surface. And so it, it can bleed through if you're not careful, but it's not as likely to bleed through um, because it's, um, it's stuck. You know, it's, you, you, it's stuck all around your letters which I love that. Now, when you're doing this, the big thing you have to worry about when you're peeling this big piece of vinyl off is that all of these pieces that are in between, the middle of the O, the, um, the inside of the D, you know, the N, you, you have to have these little pieces or it's not, it's not gonna work. It's just, you're just gonna have the outlines of letters and not the actual letters themselves. So that's just something to be aware of. Because you think, oh, that would be easy. Just why don't you just peel the whole vinyl off and stick it on there? Well, if I were to peel the vinyl off, all of the insides of the letters would be stuck to this um, vinyl uh, backing. And we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead. And I hope that this is the good vinyl. I mean, excuse me, the good transfer tape. I'm going to go ahead and get it started here. Okay. See now that these pieces of that S, they have to come up. I'm gonna have to have those. And so watch your vinyl backing. If you see any pieces of letters sticking to this, stop and go back and get it. 
And a lot of times it'll put, eventually it'll pull it along. See that D did not release. And you've got to have the inside of that D or it's not gonna be, it's not gonna look like a D, it's just gonna look like a big circle. And so, come on. The the I know, the inside of this A is not wanting to let go. Can you hold it for me? Yeah. And I'm just using my nail to get it to adhere. And like I said, you're gonna take more time with this. It's it, it's kind of, gonna, I, yeah, I see it, but sometimes it'll grab on. It didn't grab on. I've got a lot of little extra details in this, um, in this A also that I didn't have on. Come on. Uh, the, the board, Kimberly, is actually um, five millimeter underlayment board that you can buy at Lowe's. Uh, this is actually the boards, if you guys look at our other YouTube videos or on our Facebook page for Under a Texas Sky, you saw that uh, we just did a, a board and batten wall in the master bedroom and a board and batten wall on the stairwell wall up the, the uh, first and second floor. And uh, this is actually the uh, extra wood from, from that. It's just five millimeter uh, uh, wood that you can buy at Lowe's. It's like $15 a sheet for four by eight. One side is primered, the other side is uh, nice and smooth uh, grained wood, and it's perfect for projects like this. Just use the, uh, the smooth side and you're good to go. Yeah, that's right. I've, I mean, I've made countless signs with these scraps. Okay, so now, now everything is opposite of what happened on this sign. This sign, that coat that you put on there, that is going to be the background of your sign. That's going to be the main color. You're going to apply the color that you want for your letters. So I'm just going to stick this whole thing on here. And again, I'm going to make sure everything releases when I pull it back and it, it should. Well, she's famous last words. She said it should. And Kimberly, just to address your deal, if you're going to use regular plywood, um, make sure if it's finished plywood, I mean, you can use the thicker stuff. We've done that before. But make sure you sand it really well and make sure it's smooth. And that will help this vinyl to stick. It sticks a lot better on smooth plywood than, than plywood with, with might have ridges or something like That's that. That's true. On it. A rough surface, it does tend to kind of balk a little bit. See, and this vinyl not sticking super good is making me a little bit nervous um, because I need that good stick to be able to be sure that is there's no bleeding. Vinyl? Um, th this was just some old vinyl that yeah. I had. See, and that makes a difference too. Like she says, she's using older vinyl here that's not the normal stuff she used like when she did this. So the, the type of vinyl and, the, and the, the quality of vinyl that you buy makes a big difference. Well, and I made this sign a really long time ago and it's been kind of sitting rolled up for a while. I just wanted to use it as an example so y'all could see what we're doing. Okay, great, it's coming. We're at the 28 minute mark. Okay. I think we're still doing okay. Because we'll be done in just a second. Okay. And that's another thing too. If y'all haven't gone over to UndersTexasSky.com, um, I encourage you to do that. We got some cool things on there. Um, of course, here with y'all, you know, when we're watching this video live, it's Christmas time. And, um, I just posted our Christmas tree. I did I did something I've never done before. I used lots of burlap and ribbon. Um, I just wrapped the tree essentially over and over again with beautiful ribbon and burlap and I'm so proud of how it turned out. Um, and I did a post about it so y'all can see how it turned out. Okay, all right. If you're looking for handmade bows and, and ribbons, she did a fantastic job uh, making those even with the help of a three-year-old granddaughter hands. Yes, our, our <laughs> three-year-old was, that's just that vinyl left over. Yeah, our three-year-old was here and it's wonderful. Now see, there's some areas here that are kind of bubbly and that, that bothers me a lot 
because if there's air bubbles up here next to your letters, then it's for sure not laying down flat. But again, you're gonna take your time. You're gonna, you're gonna have a fresh cutout. You're gonna, um, it's gonna be a little bit different circumstance than this. But just remember, your, your background that you paint this is the main color you're gonna have. And then what I would do and what I have done when I put my vinyl on, I take painter's tape and I tape off all the other parts of the board. I don't want to get the color that I'm painting my letters anywhere else on the board. So I protect all the rest of the board. And I've even done this where I've used spray paint. Um, I love the finish of the spray paint, that it's awesome. Um, but it is kind of messy because um, you're spraying the whole entire piece of vinyl. And, uh, you know, it can, it can get a little messy. And you need to have like a little spray booth. But um, anyway, okay, so... Just quickly, like I said, I'm not, I know I'm gonna run into some trouble on this because um, all of my letters are not as flat and stuck to the board as they should be. But now, the second step in this is you're gonna take whatever color you're gonna want your- Cocktown checking in. Hey, fuck down. Um, you're gonna want, yeah, the color you want your letters. That's what's coming next. And I'm using, ah, oh, shit. Yeah, the bottom of the A right there, I can see it. Me, man, can you open this? I got it. Apparently he can't, then grab me another color. Oh, you know what, I'll use this white. Here, it's fine, babe, it's fine, I got it. That paint will not put that on with it. liquid nails? I don't know. Good Lord. The white will come on, okay. So now I'm just gonna use the same white paint. Oh, but I'm not gonna use this brush. What am I doing? And I'm using a, a <laughs> stipple brush. This is a brush that's done, that you use for stenciling. Um, that's a- Is there a particular brand on that? No. Nah, Does it matter? China. China, <laughs> hey, China. Yeah, I just think that's where it was made. I don't think that's the brand. Right. I'd gotten these stencil brushes a long time ago. Um, when I thought I was going to stencil a pattern on a wall. Pfft. Yeah, right, like that ever happened. These, I, I got that when we did my daughter, who now is, well, this week she'll be 32. She was in high school, and I thought, well, I'm just gonna stencil a design on her wall. Won't that be so awesome? Yeah. We ended up putting stripes on her wall. There was never a design that came into play there. Here, I'm, and I'm just going over the letters, and I'm kind of stippling it on there. I'm not brushing it. This helps with the odds that nothing's going to get under the vinyl, which I'm still afraid it's going to in some places because it's I didn't work to make it as smooth. Um, do that. It shows the idea in the text. Yeah, work to make it smooth um, to where you're not going to have any bleed through. But see, to me, this just seems so, it's just so much easier than having to, you know, paint that other board and then peel all those letters off one at a time and then take a chance on scratching the paint because you do have to use some kind of a, a sharp instrument to be able to get that paint, I mean, to get those letters peeled off. Um, now, there are plenty of people who do that technique. Hold and, on a second, how much paint are you putting on there? Oh, I just, I'm just dabbing it in the paint and then wiping it off the edge of the um, paint can. Okay. I'm, I'm really, in here you can see, it kind of goes on at first within a thick glob and then I just, I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it around. I mean, I'm just, I'm just kind of looking at how much paint is coming off as I'm doing this. I mean, look, I've already gotten to the end of this sign, and then I'm going to pull this whole sheet of vinyl off in one piece, and then it's going to be done. And to me, so much easier. Okay. All right. Now it's the moment of truth. We're going to see just what kind of a result that we got. Okay. And the oh, 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 yeah, the O didn't come out, and I can still come back and weed that. Right. And you can see I do have some globs. Yeah. And I would give this a second to dry just a smidge. Right. Um, before 
and see I could have added more paint down there. But y'all are getting a general picture. Okay, now I'm gonna need to weed out these couple of Yeah, and you can see how crisp things. and clear the, the lines are from, from this stencil. I mean, some of it was where it, it didn't go all the way down because like you said, you were kind of rushing it with right. the vinyl, but it was about showing the technique and, and what you can do. The two different techniques of putting words on boards. Yeah. I don't even know what's happening here. Oh, there's, there's a piece. Come on. Oh, for heaven's sake. I should pretend it was a game of operation. I'm telling you, I would have gotten buzzed. And I don't even... I don't know where the rest of that A is. Um, but but y'all see there, that that's the general idea. And then, of course, this way, when you're doing this, you're not peeling off the letter. You're just, and I've got white all over this. You're peeling off the relief. And I would wait for it to dry. I would just, yeah, just, you know, because it's really not difficult. Once it's dry, it, it comes right off. I've really enjoyed using this technique a lot. Just, be, just for the ease of it. It's just easy, and I'm saying that y'all are looking at it and going, Kelly, you're lying, it ain't easy. It is easy. Once it's dry. Once it's it, dry, you're it's easy. It. Yeah. But, basically, I hate y'all seeing the, what's not perfect, but either way, if you're taking your time, um, remember in this one, you put down the color of your letter first. Then you put your letters on there. Then you paint over the letters with the main color you want for your board, and then you're gonna peel those letters off one at a time. In this sample down here, where you do the opposite, your background that you paint, your first layer is going to be the main color of your picture. Then you're gonna put your stencil on and you're gonna paint in those letters, and then you're gonna peel the whole vinyl off, and then that is what you're gonna be left with. Um, either way is great, and also, just putting the vinyl on there is also great. And, you know, if you're when I do it for myself, I just put the vinyl on there. It's you know I think it looks great. I think it's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and you can I, I just I love the look, and it's really not. You can see it sticks really well. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's really not that. And you different. can tell when you take your time and do it the right way, and make yes. sure everything's sticking. You can see how. And this was the one that was painted, like the second one that she did, and how great this looks, and how great yours is going to look when when you do it. Yeah. As long as you just, like I said, take your time, be patient, don't get frustrated. I mean, if you're like me, I get I get a little worked up sometimes, but. Um, and I, and I get a little frustrated. But, but you're selling quite a few of these at the Hubbard I, Antique Mall, I too. I do. Y'all you know, you know I mean, we live in a little teeny town. There's a little antique mall. I've got a booth, and I do sell uh, quite a lot of these signs um, in, the, um, in the antique mall. But anyway, that's it. Um, thanks so much for joining me live. Um, I'm sorry for any little glitches or whatever. Yeah, you can grab one of those if you want to, Mark. Um, Take this. Oh, dear. I'm covering everything up. Y'all can see, I mean, this is our first time doing this. We'll come back um, and do other lives, and I'm sure they'll be much better. Um, yeah, probably not. <laughs> well, and then they might. Hey, live is good. This is another one. This is vinyl. Um, actually, that's a lie. This is paint. Yeah, you painted that one. Yeah, this is this is where I used and the... You can, and you can see, if Kimberly's still on, the, how you can see how the, the smoothness of that wood, you see the, the grain in it, but it is smooth. And that is the green coming through in the black where she painted it. Yeah, so this I used um, this technique um, down here where I actually painted the letters on there. Um, and see, it, it turned that out That was beautifully. the second one that you did. Yeah, and this also, this is one I painted. Um, I painted the letters on here. I used that second technique. And, uh, I mean, it just, it turned out great. I really do. I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. It's fun. It's quick. Um, it's easy. Making these signs is a breeze. Um, and these like will be said, for sale at the antique mall. And I forget how much you're selling these things I for. I don't even know. I don't even Not remember. much. But, um, yeah, any of y'all that are watching this from Hubbard, Texas, y'all just hey, rush on down that antique mall. If you want to come down to Waco, you <laughs> might have coffee on. Stop by. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining me. Um, be sure to check out UndertexasSky.com. 
uh, for all kinds of um, crafts and decor and, and inspiration. I love you guys. I appreciate all your comments. Um, I get tons of comments. If you have any questions, ask me. I answer every single question. I reply to every single comment, even the ugly ones I will reply to most of the time, and I'm, and I'm real nice back. She I'm won't let me reply to those. Even to, even to ugly comments, but I just appreciate y'all. There wouldn't be any me if it wasn't for y'all, so um, it's the holiday season right now. I hope y'all have a most blessed um, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. Um, if you if you don't celebrate anything at all, I hope that you still are close to your family and are safe this season. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you later. Blessings.